this video I'll be competing with AI and building a 2.5D first-person shooter in the browser. In previous videos we built popular and simple 2D games, but today we are slightly increasing the number of dimensions, the complexity of the project and the amount of suffering because of it. Ok, what the hell is 2.5D? In general, it means that it's 2D but we trick you into thinking it's 3D. And this can be achieved with a huge number of different techniques that games from the past used. Which one are we going to use? Ray casting. And what the f*** is ray casting? If you're old enough, then you probably know this game. And you see, the walls look like sliced bread, right? And that's ray casting. We have a player in a 2D space with a field of view. And inside that field, we cast rays. When a ray hits an obstacle, we find the distance to that obstacle. The shorter the distance, the taller we draw that slice. And why do you need this information? I have no idea. But now you're a ray casting expert, so let's code. And it all starts with a blank canvas. And honestly, that was the only easy part of this project. Then I wrote hundreds or even thousands of lines of code just to lay the foundation of the game engine for this project. Then I got to the rendering logic using ray casting and what the f*** is this? That definitely doesn't look like a wall. Then I added camera movement to debug and understand what's happening. And now I see that the camera is moving and the picture on the screen changes. But the walls still look like sh I mean like a scene wave. And when I fixed that, I got walls rendering. And yeah, it still looks like one of my nightmares but at least now you can navigate through the space, but there was a problem with displaying the corners of the room. So I decided to make a minimap to draw everything I needed for debugging, and I saw that the walls and the camera with its field of view work correctly, and after a couple f hours of thinking, I realized that the problem was in the wall sizes, specifically that they were overlapping at the corners. So I adjusted the wall sizes and voila, it works, still ugly but functional. Then I increased the number of ray casts, made the map bigger and added more walls. And everything seems to be working, but as a wise man said, if your code works on the first try, check it again. And yep, there is a bug in the object rendering logic and zero collision detection, so I can just walk through the walls. And it was easy to fix the rendering logic, but the collision is the part where the most interesting part begins. This is where colliders, axis aligned bounding box and a lot of other scary and confusing words appear. And a lot of mathematics of course, which I forgot the moment I got my degree. So I had to do some research. And after writing a bunch of code with a math I don't f understand, it seems to work. But of course not. At a certain angle to the wall I just get stuck and can't move. And now I'm sitting here, wondering if the problem is the math, the algorithm or the fact that I started this project. But after a few hours of pain and suffering, collisions work. Now it's time to make things a bit prettier, starting with darkening distant walls. And now it already looks like the horror game. Just need some jump scares. Then I added color to the sky and the floor and now it looks absolutely awful. But I'll fix it later with better colors and gradients, so be patient please. Then I thought like, why not add textures to the walls? And that was the biggest mistake, I wish that idea never came to me. Here's my first attempt. No clue what's going on, but that's definitely not right. The next attempt was better, it seems like the texture was applied, but once you start moving, you realize that something wrong. And clearly, I just had no idea how texture mapping works. So I had to do more research. And this led me to UV mapping. In human terms, how a texture should be mapped to an object. So after a few hours, I managed to do something close to correct texture mapping. Then I increased the number of ray casts, added gradients to the ground and sky, and now it doesn't look that bad anymore. Or does it? I also tried to fix the fish eye effect and ended up getting interesting results. Like this one, or this one, or this one. This one also looks like the beginning of a horror game. But you know guys, no matter what I tried, I couldn't remove the fish eye effect. And as another wise man said, if you can't fix something, make it a feature. So then I started implementing the actual game mechanics. And if you remember, we are making a shooter, which means we need a gun. And after searching, I found a decent sprite and some firing sound. And if we put it all together and add crosshair to the game, we get this. It's starting to feel like a shooter, right? But what's the point of a gun if there's no one to shoot it, right? So we need enemies, and here's what they are supposed to look like. But you know guys, no matter what I tried, I couldn't make the sprite always face the camera. And it was already 8am, I was dead inside and hadn't slept in 24 hours, so this is what the final version of the enemies looks like. And in the morning, I mean at 4pm, I started coding again and made the enemies move towards the player, 
add a death animation, add a game over when they reach you. And here's the final version. For a homemade browser-based FPS, I would say it's not bad. No clue how many hours I wasted on this masterpiece, but I finished in 3 days. Most of that spent building the engine and fighting with meth. Oh, and during the final recording, I found another bug, but we are keeping it. It's a feature now. Now let's see what DeepSeek can do. First, I asked it to make the full game in one prompt. Copy in the code and run it. And uh, I have no idea what's going on. I see enemies and they kind of move, I think. But it, this is far from my masterpiece, of course. Asked it to improve and got errors in the console. Told it to fix them because there's no way I'm going to fix them myself. I'm a dumb programmer after all. Okay, um, now it's even worse. So let's try breaking the functionality into parts and give it one prompt at a time. What the f***? It managed to render the map correctly. Hmm, I'm really surprised, but there's still a lot of functionality to implement, and I think this is where it will fall apart. Tried adding textures, of course there is something wrong, couldn't fix it, it's a feature now. Added enemies, you can see them through walls, couldn't fix it, so it's also a feature. Added shooting, and it works, but you can only shoot once. Yeah, and that's it. That's Deep Six final version. So, do you feel that, guys? That feeling, that satisfaction of defeating AI? Because I do, but before I start celebrating, let's see what ChatGPT can do. I gave ChatGPT the same challenge, one giant prompt. Copy the code, ran it. See anything? Yeah, me neither. But I hear gunshots. And a console error. And to be honest, I'm exhausted from dealing with AI and editing this f***ing video, so let's keep the middle steps. Here's ChatGPT's final version. Uh, yeah, I know, it looks like you want to lose your eyesight, but you can run, shoot and kill enemies. Even if hit detection is kinda questionable. Alright, time for results. But what's the point? I won, AI lost. But was this victory worth all brain cells and mental health that I lost coding this? Absolutely. I learned a lot, got some good experience and blah blah blah. Let's be honest, I'll probably forget all of it by the time this video comes out, especially the math. So if you wanna see more videos like this, then hit the like button, subscribe and see you.